Hi and welcome back to Sadie Spincraft. Today is a sheep history day and we're doing Jacobs. So I'm going to make up the bat. I will do a voiceover for the sheep history simply because I struggle working and reading. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this. See you in a minute. So the history of Jacobs. Jacob uh, named for Jacob, the son-in-law of Lab Laban, or Laban, from the book of Genesis in the Bible. These sheep have been bred in England for several centuries. In spite of their names, there is no evidence linking these sheep to the biblical flock by direct genetics. Jacobs are known for their multicoloured coats and unusually picturesque horns. They can have two, four or six horns, a trait known as polycreate, polycirate, sorry I can't say that word. Thanks to their spots they are sometimes called piebald sheep. They never had great commercial value but they were historically kept as ornamental animals by the landed by the landed gentry of England. Today, however, there are two major types of Jacob sheep. Those in Great Britain have undergone breeding shifts to make them more productive, primarily as meat animals, so they are now significantly larger while those in North America are still smaller and closer in appearance and other characteristics to the old style sheep. If you've ever seen Jacob Fleece or even a bunch of them, keep your mind open about the breed and its fibre. Jacobs have had one of the widest ranges of acceptable fibre qualities of any kind of sheep. Over time, you may learn that to accept from specific suppliers, depending on where a retailer is getting its fibre, what a breeder is emphasising in a flock, and so on. For example, oh, I can't show you pictures, so we'll go off that bit. <laughs> In Great Britain, Jacobs are grown more commercially and most of the wool ends up being industrially produced, resulting in batches of yarn or spinning fibre that are uniformly blended to white, brown, greys and possibly blacks. There tend to be more browns in British suppliers than in North American. The fibres in the top two top forms, while quite different in colour and texture, are crisp feeling, immediately reminiscent of tweeds. Both contain a bit of Kemp, a bit, there's loads of Kemp in mine. <coughs> Sorry, going off topic. The medium brown has enough Kemp to add a roughness to its overall texture and the dark brown has just a sprinkling. Breeders in North America tend to have smaller flocks and to select for fleece quality, keeping the body of the sheep much like it was in the past. In North America, there are several breed associations with slightly varying criteria for colour proportions and fleece qualities. The colours in the raw fleece was started with, that started with, did as is usual, varying slightly from each other in texture and length. So for example, the whites when sorted out were visibly different from the blacks or greys. Overall, this fibre was drastically softer than the top. With finer crimp, 
it felt almost buttery smooth, especially the grey. There was not even a hint of coarse fibre yet, let alone Kemp. Ooh, I want to try North American Jacobs. It sounds so much nicer than what I've got here. While the Jacob is not one of the down breeds of sheep, the wool has many down-like qualities, especially in the middle of its exceptionally wide, fine to coarse range. Kemp, if present, may give the wool a tweedy effect and most Jacob has a springy quality. The sheep are often I'm just going to stutter with this word. Predominantly white. One standard says 60% white. With spots of another colour. Either black, brownish or what is called lilac. Which is not a single colour and it's not yet entirely understood from the genetic perspective. It may be a grey a light brown. The spots should be cl clear with the white fibre growing from white or pink skin and the coloured wool growing from a darker skin. Well, there you go. I didn't know that. Um, a little bit from the Bible. The Genesis of Selective Breeding. In the book of Genesis, Jacob, a lowly shepherd, asked his wealthy father-in-law, Laban, if he could keep all the spotted sheep as payment for his work. His father-in-law said yes, and in a dream, God told Jacob to use only spotted rams for breeding. He soon had all spotted sheep. So, Jacob facts. The fleece weight is three to six pounds, which is 1.4 to 2.7 kilograms or a bit more. Yield 50 to 65%. British Jacobs will overall have heavier fleeces than American Jacobs. They're bigger sheep and have been bred to produce more wool and meat. 3.3 3 to 7 inches for the staple length, usually in the 3 to 6 inch, but you do sometimes get up to 7 inch. The fibre diameter is mostly 25 to 35 microns. And the natural colours are white, black, brown black and a colour called lilac. That is a soft grey or brown. Well, there we go. That was very, very interesting. See, I'm learning just as much as everybody else. As I learn, you all learn. So these facts are all new to myself as well. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. You can see here I'm um, on the white of the Jacobs. I have tried split, splitting it up. I blended the brown with a little bit of white to get a more brown. And I've put them through three times, three passes each. And you'll see the difference through each pass, just how nice it actually turns out once you work it enough. You will see me picking out uh, little bits of muck and which is like hair, grass, seeds um, and nips. In the brown you'll see me shaking it a lot because it does have dandruff and scurf. The scurf I'm afraid isn't going to come out it's been a pain in the butt and I've recently found out with some fantastic viewers letting me know that Kemp I mean scurf once it's in it's in you ain't getting it out because it's like cradle cap for kids when it's there it's there if it's in the hair it's not coming off so yeah 
I'm on the third pass, I think, now for the white. And I'll show you all how they all turn out at the end. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe. So thank you very much for joining me for this week's sheep history. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, then you don't miss any more fibery fun. Love and hugs to all you fantastic people. And don't forget, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening or night time, I want you to do what you love doing. Mwah.
Bye.